Hello, my name's Kevin Stannard. I'm Director of International Curriculum Development at the University of Cambridge International Examinations. And I'm going to talk to you about bilingual education within the Cambridge International Curriculum. Now, what I'm not going to be doing is teaching anybody's grandmother to suck eggs, because I know I'm speaking to experts in this particular field. My aim is rather to update you on CIE's increasing engagement with bilingual education and assessment and to point to current developments in Cambridge which have arisen out of that engagement and which inform some of the developments which I'll tell you about, a bit about in a moment uh, in this area. Now I'm aware that your role as pioneers and leaders in the field of bilingual practice is crucial. Uh, we see our dialogue with ESARP and with its member schools as vitally important in this ongoing development in bilingual education. Now our long-standing involvement in Cambridge with bilingual programmes already pointed to the evident fact that there's no single model but a variety of approaches to bilingual education. To Argentina's well-established programme could be added examples of more isolated initiatives such as those in Italy where we have schools that take some IGCSEs as part of a programme leading up to their uh, national qualification, the Esame di Stato. In France, at 16 to 19, we operate an international option within the French baccalaureate, where 40% of the total mark is accounted for by work in English, in geography and in history, which is done in the medium of English. And another example is Indonesia, where the National Plus programme has schools within the state system running IGCSE programmes as part of the curriculum, whereby they're benchmarking to international standards some of the subjects that are studied in English medium, including English, maths and science. More recently, there's been much more rapid growth and, if anything, greater diversity in provision within bilingual education. One example that I point to is in Spain, where over the last year we've been working with the Federal Ministry of Education in 120 schools who are offering an English medium education within the Spanish curriculum in a number of subjects. And this summer, uh, students in 20 schools took IGCSE exams and the results were extremely encouraging. Other countries where bilingual programmes are being operated at state level include Germany, a number of countries in the Balkans and the Netherlands and in Egypt. There are independent initiatives too across countries such as Sweden, Germany, Italy, China and countries in the Middle East. In each of these, the models are different and we're having to engage in different contexts. Overall, increasing demand for bilingual education reflects an increasing appreciation of the advantages, advantages with which you're very familiar in Argentina, of learning and being able to operate in a second language effectively as preparation for higher education. In Europe, EU statements and policies on bilingual education reflect a growing commitment by states, by governments, towards bilingual aims. Within the EU, we have, from a UK perspective at least, a very ambitious programme called MT Plus Two, where the objective is that students should leave school competent not just in their mother tongue, but in two other languages, one of which might be a regional language within that country. And it doesn't just stop within Europe, within Latin America. In Brunei, in Southeast Asia, they have a curriculum that builds from first language medium to second language medium, English, over time. Uh, English is used for science from primary four and then increasingly becomes the medium of instruction across the whole curriculum. Now in terms of delivering bilingual education, there are lots of different models of delivery. The Cambridge International Curriculum has to be flexible enough to accommodate and support those different models, those different routes through a bilingual programme. Added to which, there are several different ways of integrating international and English medium education within national curriculum frameworks when we're operating in collaboration with states. Now the Cambridge International Curriculum that runs from the primary programme through the lower secondary programme and into IGCSE and on to A-level and pre-university preparation needs to provide a coherent progression from stage to stage and to link to at key points to internationally benchmarked uh, points of comparison 
in assessment. But it also needs to allow for entry of students at different stages with different levels of language competence and it's got to allow for customization within different national contexts. One example might be some of the initiatives which were involved in, in the Middle East, where a common requirement is that the core subjects in a curriculum from very early stages are delivered in English, but that there is a first language component which includes the language itself and also a social studies element very often, um, building into uh, a coherent curriculum delivery in primary and lower secondary and then increasingly taking over with English medium education later on.